<laughs> My name is Amy Two, and welcome back to Talk to Transformer. And uh, let's just go. Amy Two found a uh, flash light in the uh, hole in the wall. Amy Two found a flashlight in the hole in the wall. It was dead, but kept working. <laughs> While extracting it, f the firefighters found two cans of Doritos <laughs> and uh, with spit in them. What? Excuse me, what? Then five minutes later, another flashlight. One of the firefighters thought it was a gun. Uh, thought was a gun. Uh, went off causing the break in the door one of the firefighters was having second thoughts because they found a bloody bandage on the barrel of the gun tear gas grenades it was around 11 p.m. when the firefighters noticed that the restroom door had not been forced open <laughs> They were at the the last call of the day and couldn't find anyone who would have had access to the restroom. The smoke was still visible. A firefighter noticed the that fire hair was sweet and was seeping. <laughs> what? Amy too found a flashlight in the hole in the wall. She ran and then ran to the back bedroom and hid in the closet as she heard an off-gassing sound. What? The door to the first bedroom she went to open and Jack cut his throat as they both went for it. Because her family dog was outside. They found her dog chance and were able to make it to the nearest town hall at this point everyone at the table starts asking us where we've been how long we've been there why is everything a blank slate <laughs> neither of us felt comfortable divulging any information not wanting to give up our escape after some explaining, the CCPD, the police, showed up and placed what they claimed to be evidence on the table. Those that that that, what they claimed to be evidence. <laughs> Moon was uh, digging through. Uh, box of parts. Moon was digging through a box of parts to get one of those big trees that wouldn't come out uh, come off. She grabbed one off the ground and held it high above her. I'm not putting down this tree, yes. A scream came from somewhere down the hall. She spun and looked down the hall only to see Luna's face. Her chest ripped open from where the tick monster had fed on her. What is this? Trying to push past the moon's legs. Luna, Calliope said. Who is this guy? You might have actually bitten her. And she'll have to go to the hospital. You think? She's only 15 and she doesn't need to be treated like a baby, Calliope said, slapping her girlfriend on the dot dot dot. What in the world was that? Moon was digging around, uh, digging through a box of parts when he heard a noise that wouldn't stop. As he looked around, he saw that the girl was crouching in front of him, hands on her knees. What's wrong? You can't read me? She asked in an unnaturally calm voice. <laughs> I'm sorry, but where did you find all this? <laughs> I, 
I looked for you all over the academy. Someone knew you were coming. So I looked for you wherever you went. I was getting prepared to go on a, go to another mission. I was about to go to the dust mines. <laughs> the dust mines? Why would you mine for dust? I was about to go to the dust mines to mine something important. Maybe I could use some dust? <laughs> I just found it! Ruby returned to the dot dot dot. Dust. <laughs> Moon was digging through a box of parts in the basement and stumbled across the yoke. Which he had accidentally been sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> he took it, unpacked it, and went down to my house to see how he'd like it. The daylight from the window above showed me the top of the yoke, and I looked down at the little brass yoke hanger on, to on top. I gave it a little tug. It would only turn, it would turn only 90 degrees. Like a piece of galvanized wire. <laughs> so, I it couldn't be used as a makeshift telephone. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> this was a thing that had just been made in, Bur in Birmingham in 1903. But it was indestructible. The blacksmith had added two strong rivets so that it would last over a hundred dot 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 a hundred years moon was digging through a box of parts for a newly upgraded helmet which required a new landing gear and emergency lights a helmet this sounds more like a plane and they found this leather bag it had a pouch where <laughs> a leather bag with a pouch where Mr. Moon could carry any useful items he wanted for his time on the moon. <laughs> the bag had a map, two reels of film. Why film? Some people's signatures. <laughs> An envelope with money. A pen, gloves, space helmet, and the new landing gear. <laughs> This gear had a few minor problems. Mr. Moon's digital recorder had failed during the sample collection, collection, so there wasn't much tape in it. A piece of dental floss had fallen off. A far cry from the steel cable that had encased it a year before. But Mr. Moon had dot dot dot. Moon was digging through box parts from a lawnmower. The people at the door had put out wooden walkways and the feeling of being a stranger. <laughs> wooden walkways and the feeling of being a stranger. But even if you found yourself the only one on the floor, with your back to the stairs, you weren't alone. The house was full of things you could ho to hold on to. Are you implying that you're gonna get extremely drunk? She snuggled into his body and began imagining him into the war in the warm house, getting her coffee, doing his taxes. She imagined him working at the house where she had grown up. Her father, the architect. The past, the present, the future. Yeah, he said. You don't have to do that. They did it and do it anyway. She smiled at that that that. I like how she snuggled into his body. What? Oh, whoa, this is this is disjointed. Moon was digging through a box of parts for his Vespa. What is that? Inside was a steering wheel, and the pain in his heart was unbearable. <laughs> Before he had any chance to collect himself, an eruption threw him from the room. 
The old man was still unharmed, but his house had collapsed. <laughs> the explosion having been caused by his wife's magic. <laughs> he barely made it out of the room before collapsing. I'm so sorry, my dear, Evie said with an apologetic smile. Don't worry about that. The comet was nowhere to be found. What? Weed had been running from around in the rubble for about a half an hour before he came upon the rest of his friends. He gathered them up and apologized. A guy called Weed? This guy is called we Weed. What? <laughs> Sledder watched as a guy you used magic. <laughs> what is this? Slutter watched as a guy used magic to slow his voice. The man ran up to him. Well, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> you know, because he slowed his voice. The guard was taken aback by the sudden outburst. You're the famous cloud man, aren't you? <laughs> he, he said, recognizing one of the monsters from a few movies. <laughs> I'm here to steal money and bring my, back my son, the man explained. Cloud man blinked. Oh, really? Yes, really. Well, why don't you come over here and, sh and let me show you my world, cloud man said. The guard shook his head. No, I don't think so. So, well, it dot dot dot. I like how the the guy just said, "I'm here to steal money and bring back my son." Slutter watched as a guy used magic to create an explosion in the middle of the strip of flesh. <laughs> that kind of explosion is ideal for the evil eye spell, which marks its victims with burning pain. Yes, get that flame out of me, said Katowina. Pointing at Shandy, the group moved with quick, natural, instinctual movement as they moved forward. Shandy felt a blast of cold air, and then a surge of energy was sucked up into his body. It hit him in his face. <laughs> driving his eyes wide open and sending his vision darkening. <laughs> Rory woke up in a cold sweat. She barely had time to cast a warm blanket on herself before a loud scream aroused her from her discomfort. <laughs> what was this? What? Sutter watched as a guy used magic to rearrange each snowflake into a bigger snowflake. Like a crab's claws, that's what they do, Slutter said. <laughs> they use those claws like ice axes to chop, to chop and form a snowflake. <laughs> ice axes? What? They come together at the bottom and go over to the top, making a larger snowflake. The sawdust was eventually cleared away to reveal what Slutter calls a... <clears throat> happy pile. <laughs> Essentially more snow. <laughs> this one can have an apartment in it, Slayer said. <laughs> what is this crap? Pointing at one piece, he said snow dust was just material used to cover the underside of a lot of these slates, which can be used to create a large pile of snow. <laughs> there, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> that one was amazing. Freaking, this one can have an apartment in it. <laughs> what is this? Sutter watched as a guy used magic on the scientist's cat, resulting in the cat appearing to fly away with the scientist, <laughs> with the scientist taking it as a result of magic. 
Slutter then gave his speech in which he told the audience that he'd broken the world record for cold weather fishing by catching an 82 degree fish in 10 minutes 21 seconds. Slutter has caused a lot of controversy recently. He hasn't returned from his fishing trip yet. And even then, he's had plenty of press attention about his colder than average temperatures. What? Slutter watched as a, guy, as a guy used magic to send the ball into the net and, one, and wondered out loud, did he see it? At the same moment, somebody called out, it's the greatest shot I've ever seen. I asked for it, Skipper replied. Skipper? Skipper? You mean like Gilligan Skipper? I had a hard time saying no. There was no way I was going to turn him down. Just as he was about to make the move, It's the greatest shot I've ever seen, Skipper said, too loudly to be heard by the whole stadium. <laughs> Fulton County Stadium is just one of, the, one of a few homes in the Red Wings minor league affili affiliates. So many teams have fled to Florida. Detroit has not had a Western hockey dot dot dot. Sweater watched as a guy used magic to turn a soccer ball into a drink. <laughs> huh? said Scott. There it is, expl exclaimed Frederick. Frederick, why are you in a convenience store? <laughs> I was coming to collect my supplies from uh, Kelo uh, Kelona, said uh, Fed uh, Frederick. Here, I'll show you to your quarters. You'd better take good care of your supplies. Frederick then produced a heavy black case. I bought this. I brought this with me. They are really magical, said Frederick. Really? Are they? I didn't know they could do magic, said Jack. Yes, really, they're a property of magical spirit, called dot dot dot. A property of magical spirit. Slitter watched as a guy used magic to build a castle out of ice. His skin turned blue. It was a little strange for him, but he accepted the whole, the entire thing as a part of his routine. Kala had long and her legs shined in gold. When she rolled her legs up to the ankle, to her ankles, excuse me, she seemed to stand on tiny little socks. <laughs> what? Though that wasn't the look she wanted to give to Luna. Her body was breathtakingly smooth and she was a force to be reckoned with. Her body temperature seemed to be even with hers, which seemed more than could be said for Luna. <laughs> they were unaware that someone was spying on them. They were all mesmerized. Luna was staring, was staring at the horse. She didn't that that that. You mean, what Luna thought was Kala was actually the horse? <laughs> Big boy and buddy was making a new space weapon. <laughs> what is this? Big boy and buddy was making a new space weapon. And we're kind of working on something right now, so I don't know when we're going to get to it. Until that time... I just feel like we've got to make sure we can do what we can to make sure that what we're doing isn't a distraction. The Vapors. This most recent addition to the Stones Throw Roaster comes from a pair of hip-hop groupies and collaborators. Kill, kill a Graham and color uh, color of truth who was a regular on the E40's gangstar label the duo 
the kind who make voodoo gloves with soja boy, <laughs> soja boy, mix and mingle and perform together with color of truth often riding in on vibes. <laughs> da, what? You're riding in on vibes. The uh, dust men. Excuse me, what the? Big Boy and Buddy were making, was making a new space weapon. As luck would have it, not too long after I was there, other rumors, other rumors were starting to be heard that the Dust Men were building a weapon that could use the plasma field of the Aurora from Charon. They may not be using those still, but they're making progress. Word is our new neighbors are building a giant weapon based off of uh, off the Aurora, which I think is too much. Anyway, I know not much about them and what they're doing, but I know it's kind of cool. Sometimes I hope they develop some powerful weapons with this technology. <laughs> the Dusters, they're having me over for something awesome, and we could be a real, real deadly squad. Just be careful, though. The Dustmen. Are you kidding me? Big Boy and Buddy was making a new space weapon called the Manta Ray. That's a fish that could devastate cities. The Punisher was on the case. The Punisher. But was joined by the former Avengers, the Vision, the Wisp, Vision's girlfriend, Scarlet Witch, and War Machine. There's a guy called War Machine? Even if Buddy had worked with Nighthawk to produce the super weapon, it was not in relentation to Chris Christian, Christensen's death, but to prevent the world from getting even more screwed up. The Avengers tried to talk their way out of the situation, but they were outmatched. The Punisher was on the was on the trail of a piece of the device and when it became revealed that the two pieces were accidentally transported to Central Park via powerful electricity things turned dot 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 Big Point Buddy was making a new space weapon and it was awesome head of the meeting between Cossack and Korma Cossack tells his friends about a meeting he's been to with his girl boy crush, Korma. She was invited to his place. She was like, yay, where are we going? I don't know. Whoa! <laughs> Their new meeting room is, was basically a wood paneled room with a floor made from bike chipped rims. <laughs> and an unusually thick coating of the ghost glue the ghost glue that looked like a straight up drinkable beer <laughs> what? Korma, Korma was busy being unceremoniously dumped by her boyfriend <laughs> every sketch every stretch of dot 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 what? I looked like just a straight up drinkable beer. <laughs> Big Boy and Buddy were, was making a new space weapon called the Siege Cannon. It was a massive gun that would rotate as it fired and was well into the development stage before being cancelled. Dr. Eureka w tried to convince Nick Fury to incorporate the device into his Iron Man suit. But Fury rejected the idea. Eventually Iron Man dropped out of the project at the last minute due to Fury's refusal to even consider it. During this period of debe development, Stark created the Iron Patriot armor as part of the project Farah to keep, I mean, to help keep the peace in China. <laughs> but it would also become one of the most advanced battle suits ever created, albeit during the Vietnam War. 
which would introduce the wo or the robot drones that would la later be used in dot dot dot. What? Uh, yes, Vietnam War, 2067. I end this video here. If you liked it, please subscribe. And I'll see you, uh, go look at my other videos, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.